we're back. How is everyone's 2022 going so far? Yeah, I thought that I would do a quick spot check before we get into this episode, Realistic Expectations for the Recovering Perfectionist. Did any of you guys make New Year's resolutions? You know, if you listen to our last episode, I touched on some rituals that I do to set intentions for the upcoming year. But the one thing that I didn't address is how we can actually sabotage ourselves in manifesting our intentions, goals, resolutions before we even begin. I like to call it identity sabotage. Okay, so before I even get into this awesomeness, I have to share with you how I discovered that I suffered from perfectionism. So when I first thought about creating this podcast, I wanted to title it Realistic Expectations for the Recovering Overachiever, because I felt that was one of my biggest struggles. Yet I wasn't sold on this title, and I thought about it, I meditated on it, I slept on it. I kept on looking at it over and over again going, gosh, is that, is that it? I just don't know if that's it. I think that's it. But this is what kept me from doing this podcast was because I just wasn't sold on this particular title until one day I received a text message from a friend who sends me inspirational quotes daily. I just love her and I love getting them. And this one in particular had to deal with perfectionism. And at that moment, it hit me. I'm like, that is me. Oh my gosh. I was so focused on the title of this episode being perfect that I was sitting on it and I wasn't putting it out there because I didn't think it was good enough. A title. Really? The message is the same. But anyways, at that moment, I knew that my overachieving personality was only a symptom of a much deeper condition a condition I like to call perfectionism. While perfectionism isn't considered a mental illness in and of itself, it is a common factor in many mental disorders. And the root cause, and you know me, I'm all about getting to the root because that's where we dive deeper within and it allows us to see our truth, right? And the root cause of perfectionism can be linked to a fear of judgment or disapproval from others. That hit me hard. I don't know about you, but that one hit me hard. So as I started to look a little bit more into this perfectionism thing, and if I really had it, (laughs) 
I came up with these questions. They kept on coming up and I kind of put them all together and I'm going to ask them to you. And you, you, you say yes or no here and I won't hear you, but you know, if you resonate, man, please comment in this uh, podcast review or go to the Facebook Soul Shack Sisters podcast page and plug it in there because I would love to hear. I'm assuming I'm not alone, but here they are. Do you feel like you fail at everything you try? Do you procrastinate regularly? Do you resist starting a task because you're afraid you'll be unable to complete it perfectly? Do you struggle to relax? Or as I like to call it, stress laxing? My husband sometimes looks at me and he's like, oh my gosh, you're manic. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm fine. I just got to do this and that. And I'm trying to like lay down and watch a movie with him. But then my mind's racing because I'm thinking about all these things that I need to do. Stress laxing. Yeah. Do you find it hard to share your thoughts or your feelings? Do you find it hard to share your thoughts or feelings because maybe you're afraid people might judge you, laugh at you, think what you're thinking is silly, unrealistic, unobtainable? I don't know. It's just, it's too scary to share it, so you just don't. Do you have an all or nothing mentality that you think that if you can't do it perfectly on the first time, you're just not even going to do it? If you don't have all of the stuff that you need to start, you're just like, why bother? Do you focus on results only? Do you feel depressed by unmet goals? Do you have a fear of failure? You see, people with perfectionism hold themselves to impossibly high standards. Perfectionism can make you feel unhappy with your life. It can lead to depression, anxiety, eating disorders, low self-esteem and harm, and worse yet, it can lead you to stop living your life. And this is why we keep it hidden in the murky mud puddle of our mind. We'd rather ignore those feelings and preoccupy our mind with unrealistic expectations because the idea, the simple idea of achieving them makes us feel good. Yet deep down inside, because we haven't dealt with the root cause of our condition, we know we won't actually follow through with it. We continue living a life with one failed attempt after another if we even bother trying in the first place. We place these high, unrealistic expectations on ourselves and use them as proof for later when we don't meet our goals. We say, see, I knew I would fail. See, I knew I wasn't good enough. We actually sabotage ourselves before we even started, you guys. Unrealistic expectations are just that. They're unrealistic. We place too high of an expectation on what we are trying to accomplish by trying to do too much too fast before we have even created a solid foundation behind our why. And this is where we get to the root. Understanding how this happens is the first step in creating an effective goal and an action plan to manifest our new reality. You see, most of the time, our desires to evolve and grow and change our mindset, they come from a past experience where we felt as if we weren't good enough or we didn't fit in or we felt unseen. So we begin placing too much value or self-worth on the outcome of achieving than we actually place on the person that we are becoming through the process. We think that if we did what we saw other people doing, we too would feel worthy and seen. We'd feel special. We'd feel important. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. If it did, so many successful millionaires, or who am I kidding? Now it's billionaires, right? Or trillionaires, gosh. Gazillionaires, it keeps growing. We are looking up to those types of people and and, and singers and actors and other people alike that are also struggling. How do I know this? Because we're seeing them turn to addiction, suicide, and other forms of identity sabotage. You see, the key is clarity. 
When you can identify your why and get to the root cause of your desires, then and only then can you cultivate a clear path to manifest your dreams into reality with lasting results. You see, most of our goals that we set and place unrealistic expectations on, they fall into a danger zone. And this zone is filled with fear, comparison, jealousy, and self-worth. Now, why are these considered the danger zone? Because as we know, being a perfectionist isn't a healthy trait. And it stems from a deeper condition where we place too high of a value on the outcome and link it to our own self-worth. So therefore, when we start setting goals, looking to start a new task, or plan our next chapter, if we set our intentions in fear, comparison, jealousy, and place our self-worth on it, we are doomed to fail again and again. And then you add that with the idea that we are already setting ourselves up for sabotage. Man, we're in a world of hurt. So let me break down these key danger zone traps so that you can identify them when you see them coming. And the first one is comparing. Comparing affects our measuring stick. When we compare ourselves to other people's success, this is where we also lose our identity because we are almost trying to mimic others in hopes to achieve their success and not our own. We lose sight of our intentions. We get lost in a vicious cycle of compare and contrast. We compare our own progress based on someone else and then beat ourselves up when we don't measure up. We lose sight of the progress we have made because it doesn't look like we think it should. So we give up. And then there's jealousy. Jealousy affects our intentions and our why. Our motives become more about appearance and competition then it actually has to do with our own transformation. And then there's that big F word, fear. When we go into anything with a fear mindset, we are sure to see all the reasons why we won't succeed. We are sure to hit roadblocks and setbacks and other limiting belief obstacles that will validate our murky mud puddle mind. We cannot live in fear and faith at the same time. When we are living in fear that we won't get what we think we need or we will lose something if we don't do this thing or achieve that goal, we are coming from a place of lack. This fear-based mindset, it sends out negative vibration, negative energy that attracts like things to it. Remember, like attracts like. And then my favorite, self-worth. Self-worth to me is the biggest danger zone pitfall of them all. The others might get you going, but when you place your self-worth on the outcome and then don't reach your said goal, you give up. Not only on the goal, but you. You believe all the negative things you think about yourself and why you can't have, be, or achieve what it is that you want. You believe the lies you've been holding on to as your truth. And once again, you use them to validate your reasons to give up. Our brain is wired for connection, but the traumas in the past hurts and rejections, it rewires it for protection. And here is where perfectionism is born. Our brain wants us to feel safe. So it becomes natural to avoid doing the things that put us at risk of not being safe. We give in to this false sense of security because it's easier to give up, not start, or to justify to ourselves why it wasn't meant to be for us in the first place. Yet, this is the big yet, you're eligible too. Something inside of you doesn't really believe it. So after some time of sitting idle, you try again. Can you see now how this pattern has been working in your life? Can you see now how we, without even knowing it, set ourselves up to fail, to protect ourselves from the fear of rejection, judgment, and pain? 
Yet now we are beginning to realize that we are the only ones actually responsible for feeling it in the first place. Yeah, I know. It's kind of deep. But here's how we're going to break this negative habit loop, you guys. I got you. And I can only share with you what I did to break it in hopes that it might help you do the same. And don't get me wrong. I struggle with perfectionism still and I find myself on the daily falling into the danger zone of unrealistic expectations. But now, when I see and feel it happening, I can pause and I can go back to these specific questions that I created to remind myself why I am doing what I am doing and to reset my preset to create realistic expectations. So before you begin putting your goals to work, you need to check your motives. And these are the questions that I ask myself before writing out a goal, before creating a vision board and setting a new intention. And I use it daily when I fall into the the danger zone. I ask myself, why is this goal important to me? I ask it and then I sit quietly and I listen. It's great to do a meditation. You just sit and you pause and you do this. Why is this goal important to me? And then sit and listen and receive the messages. Because your higher self will come through. Your soul self will tell you the truth. What are my intentions? Who am I doing this for? Where did this come from? Where did this come from? You ask yourself these questions. Why is this goal important to me? What are my intentions with this goal? Who am I doing this for? And where did this come from? And once you've said what you needed to say in asking these questions and sat and listened to your higher self, your soul self coming through, and you've established that now these goals are healthy goals, Now it's important to set realistic expectations with a measurable yet mindful measuring stick based on your journey only. So here's the realistic expectations part, okay? And this is only being spoken about now because we know we have done those things and we know this particular goal meets the motive test. It meets the healthy goal test. We first set SMART goals. You know those SMART goals, the specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time. Or as I like to say, instead of specific, for us perfectionists, I like to say simple and sensible. Is it measurable or meaningful or motivating? Is it achievable or attainable? Is it realistic or reasonable? And then the time part, I like to say transforming. Will this be hurting me or helping me when I put a timeline on it? Being specific with your goal is the first and most important part about it. If your goal is to, I don't know, lose weight, don't just say my goal is to lose weight. Be specific. How much weight are you looking to lose? If your goal is to lose 50 pounds, what timeline are you giving yourself to do this? How will you measure your progress? If your goal is to lose 50 pounds and at the end of week one, you only lose one pound, do you see this as a failure or do you see this as progress? Is it achievable? Do you actually have 50 pounds to lose or does that just sound like a good number or one that you've used forever and ever so you just keep sticking with it? Is this something that is actually achievable? And if so, what are you going to do to make it so? Is it realistic? Did you set your goalposts in their proper place? Is it realistic to lose the weight in a healthy way that is actually possible for your body type? And then time. The whole transformational time portion. 
Give yourself grace and time to see the progress and the transformations that are taking place. Give yourself time to be present in your day-to-day journey, not just the outcome. So tips for you perfectionists, whatever your goal weight or end result or time to hit said result, add three more months and lower the outcome by 20%. Chances are you have already shot the mark before you even started. And I know it's hard, but we can do hard things. One of the strengths of a perfectionist is that we are determined, stubborn, and relentless. And yes, sometimes being stubborn is a good thing. Our character defects are also our assets when we have a healthy mindset supporting them. So now that your SMART goal outline is complete... It's time to put it into action. So key tips to remember when going into the action phase. Number one, it's okay to delegate. Mm -hmm, You heard me. It's okay to delegate. Stop this. Nobody can do it better than me, so I have to do it myself. We can allow someone else to help support us. You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it all, nor should you. Number two, it's okay to make mistakes. Say it with me. It's okay to make mistakes. This is where we grow and we fail forward. Number three, it's okay to put yourself in a timeout. Practice the 80-20 rule, okay? This is where we challenge our all-or-nothing old way of thinking. This is where we set our intentions and reset them again if need be. If we shot the mark too high, we can look back and go, okay, I'm going to give myself some grace here. We practice 80-20. We cannot do everything perfectly all the time, every time. Perfection is overrated, Progress is progress. Progress makes better, not perfect. Perfectionism doesn't exist. It's not real. If it did, when somebody broke a world record, that would be it, right? Because that was perfect. But what happens? Somebody else breaks it again and again and again. Because we're always striving. We're always striving. And we can always evolve and we can always raise our bar and we can always get better, Number four, whatever you set out to do that day, you know, your to-do list and you're marking out your things, and this is all the things that I'm going to do today, whatever you set out to do that day, cut it in half. Yeah, I see you. I see you because I am you. And then here are the three things to stop doing. Stop over-delivering. Stop over-committing. And stop overloading your plate. Because believe it or not, those three things are our defense mechanisms trying to sneak in. They give us an excuse to be too busy to focus on us. They give us an excuse to use later when we didn't meet our goalpost. They give us a false sense of worth and purpose when it comes from a place of avoiding ourselves. Now, I'm all about helping others. You know that. But when it costs me my own peace and serenity, the price is too high. If I'm doing it to avoid me, if I'm doing it to run from me, that's not healthy for me. And if I'm not healthy, I can't be healthy for others. And finally, set out blocks of time that you will review your goals. Now, these should be broken down into daily, weekly, and monthly goals. And in these blocks of time, you review your progress. Remember, progress is still progress. And celebrate every little win. Every one of them. They add up and reinforce the positive new habits you are creating. Remember, we are not only working on our perfectionism here. We are actually working on breaking old habits to create new, healthy, and most importantly, realistic ones that enhance and transform our new way of living. You got this. 
We can do this. We can do hard things. We can ask for help. We can delegate. We can take time outs. We can review, reassess. We can do this. I want to thank you so much for t t tuning in. My goodness. See, now the perfectionist in me would want to like edit that out, but I'm leaving it in just to prove that I'm working on this too, you guys. I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Soul Shack Sisters. And I would like to thank you for being here and for all of your guys' awesome comments for being, being who you are and showing up. I just want to thank you so much. And I want to invite you to leave a comment, a review, and share this podcast with someone that you know that might need a reset in their mindset. Much love and light to you all. Ignite. Have an amazing day. I can't wait to meet you guys all back here again soon on another episode of the Soul Shack Sisters podcast. Love you guys. Mwah.